Okay, so now I'm going to talk about diabetes mellitus in uh, pregnancy. So, what you know about diabetes mellitus in pregnancy is a condition whereby you have uncontrolled blood sugars during your pregnancy. Throughout the pregnancy, from the first day, I mean, from the first day you know that you are pregnant until delivery, until your labor, you are in labor. So, in all those periods, you are diagnosed to have gestational diabetes mellitus. Anyway, I mean, usually gestational diabetes mellitus, long time ago, they classified it as you develop it during a uh, second and third trimester. Okay, but uh, they already classified it uh, up to first trimester because even though it's a different etiology, I mean, if you have diabetes mellitus in the first trimester, it's more likely because of you have uh, existing diabetes mellitus compared to um, uh, you develop the diabetes uh, during the second and third uh, may most likely you are you are having it because uh, during the uh, because of the pregnancy itself so how how pregnancy can induce diabetes mellitus so diabetes mellitus in pregnancy usually is because of insulin resistance so during your during the pregnancy the insulin become more resistant because there is an anti-insulin activity and there is also increased release of cortisol so increased release of cortisol also promotes uh, increase of uh, blood sugar in our body other than that uh, okay so usually for this um, we need to no, the risk factors. All uh, patients uh, to uh, whether so we can manage properly for this patient with uh, gestational diabetes mellitus. Why? Why we need to uh, screen them? Because this will have uh, complications mainly to the babies and for some to the mother. Okay, so what are the complications? Uh, pointing mainly to the baby so usually patients if you are not controlled in sugar your baby is going to be big your baby is going to be very very big i mean it's more than four kilo more than 3.7 kilograms it's quite big you know and other than that um there is highly likely that uh the baby have uh, the baby is dead. I mean, uh, you uh, when you deliver when you in labor in your you're in labor, baby in stillbirth. Okay, baby is dead. And what else? Um. So during the delivery, there is uh, I mean during the delivery, high sugar, high insulin causing high insulin hyperplasia in in uh, in babies. And also, uh, the high sugar is also reflecting to the uh, blood sugar in the babies. So when there is uh, when the cord is cut, and suddenly there is no uh, blood supply to the baby, I mean uh, the baby can breathe uh, through the uh, lung. And uh, during this time, during this time, the sugar will be dropped significantly because high insulin in the babies high insulin in the pancreas in the baby so the baby will might have hypoglycemic and hypoglycemic is very dangerous to the baby because uh, this will damage the brain and causing uh, causing uh, motor development problems usually you can see in uh, several palsy patients so that's why that's why we need we really really have to concern about it we really have to control about it okay other things is that um other thing is for the mother for the mother usually patients uh it's the same with the it's the same with the other patients with diabetes uh, you have a risk for having a very high sugar and this will lead to uh, ketoacidosis uh, or you 
will be very low in sugar that uh, will lead to hypoglycemics all those are emergencies if it's not controlled properly so for these patients you need to do ultrasound i mean you need to identify identify during the screening i mean during the first checkup you need to identify it there are few risk factors uh, to identify uh, the risk for the patients to have to develop diabetes mitis uh, later in pregnancy you must have family history of pregnancy a uh, family history of diabetes mitis you must have probably a previous history of diabetes mitis in pregnancy and also maybe a previous stillbirth or you have a glycosuria or you have a urinary recurrent urinary tract infections in in pregnancy uh, what other things are if you are obese if you are overweight you need to screen for uh, diabetes mitis and what else um, if you uh, if you have <laughs> diabetes mitis itself okay so all those things are the risk factors and you are at high risk i mean in malaysians uh, in malaysia uh, the asians have a higher risk for diabetes mitis and i think this is uh, good enough that that uh, the malaysian itself is good enough for them uh, to be screened because when you are not screened early and there is highly likely uh, that when you develop diabetes mitis later in uh, later in pregnancy and it will it will cause uh, much more problems so i think uh, even though there are very relative risks i mean uh, not uh, they are not fulfilling all the risks but i think it's, uh, i think the government should screen anyway even though it's uh, probably uh, because of the cost they didn't do it but i think uh, because diabetes mitis is such in prevalence in pregnancy so uh, we screen all the all the uh, vdrl on all those things but why not we screen all the patients with diabetes mitis all the patients i mean if we can screen them with all those uh, rare rare infections like hiv heb and all that why not pregnancy why not diabetes mitis and you need to screen that that is my my opinion so regardless of the risk factors if if the patient have no risk factors uh, even though so they still need to they still need to uh, screen it and for these patients there are two options either you control it with diets or they control it with um, uh, insulin okay so uh, when they screen it usually they will give a uh, sugary drinks okay uh, we call it as a uh, modified glucose tolerance test we give 75 gram of glucose and uh, in a work and and then uh, you need to drink it and after one hour and after two hours we need to measure so for fastings usually um, less than 5.3 so it's okay if it's fasting less than 5.3 is um, satisfied and um postprandial i mean after eating it should be less than 7.8 so within those range i mean less than 5.3 for fasting less than 7.8 for uh after eating after meals so if let's say the result showing that the one of it is high so you need to i mean you need to start to control your diets so before breakfast before lunch before uh, dinner and before um, sleep you need to measure all those uh, sugar profile and um, it, if it's turned out to be if you are not in control i mean turn out to be uh, even though you have to you have control your diet and uh, the sugar level is still high and so we need to give you insulin so um, we need to give you probably uh, three times of short acting insulin means that you need to have it inject you need to inject it 
um, before meals and also um, one time uh, long acting insulin uh, before sleep so you have four injections so this is quite terrible right who wants to uh, be injected I'm not sure whether the patients who have been injected whether it's painful or not <laughs> uh, because it's a needle probably it's painful okay so um, you need to control it that way so if you are insulin it's going to be really really hard uh, you need to measure it before meals after meals uh, lunch uh, breakfast lunch and also uh, dinner and before sleep so you need to have at least seven measurements okay until you are you are delivered because we need to really really control your blood sugar uh, level so it won't compromise your baby mainly your baby and you as well so in the first trimester if you're not controlling it's going to be very uh, uh, really a big problem because uh, in the first uh, in the first trimester the first 12 weeks is where uh, the the your the baby's organ is being developed so if you're not controlling it during this week uh, during that week period of times so there are highly probability that there is a defect mainly in the uh, heart so if the patient may have might, might have a uh, um, um, ventricular septal defect and if uh, let's say the patients uh, um, and the patient probably have a sacral agenesis agenesis I mean not developing developing the sacral and all those things the congenital anomalies we say we call it as a congenital anomalies meaning that the, there's a defect during uh, during the development itself okay it's not acquired it's genetic so we don't want that okay in the late trimester, the complications, like I said, microsomia, I mean the big baby, and hypoglycemic, and also shoulder dystocia. If you deliver vaginal, uh, in, in a normal delivery, vaginal delivery, you will have a very, there is high risk for the baby to have shoulder dystocia, and hypoglycemic, or it could be hyperglycemic. So, all those things need to be taken very heavily I mean you need to control your blood sugar level and also uh, you need to control it I mean every single meal that's why diabetes mitosis in pregnancy is such an important thing so for you all who are in pregnant you need to know this you are really really need to know this Okay, so that's it for today. The tips for handling, I mean, this is we are, as a doctors, how we are going to uh, control your diabetes. Mentors. That's the best way. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.